A rare syndrome left a retired realtor and grandfather here in the valley trapped in his own body. He suffered what many might consider their worst nightmare, paralyzed but fully conscious of the world around him, unable to communicate with anyone. He explains how he broke free. Somebody says the glass is half empty, I say it's half full. Michael Dills has always had a positive attitude, a tool that got him through the darkest scare of his life. In 2012, Michael suffered a stroke. We believed what the doctors told us and said he was pretty much brain dead. Yeah, I can hear the doctor talking to all my family and she's telling them, you know, there's no hope. I couldn't move my head, I couldn't move my eyes side to side. They would come in with needles and just stick them in his feet and see, they would say, see, he has absolutely no reaction. But Michael did feel the needle pokes. He just was unable to tell anyone. Basically, you're locked in your own body. You can't do anything. You can't move anything. You can only move your eyes vertically. You can't even move them side to side. Michael had suffered what is called locked-in syndrome. He was aware of his surroundings, but was physically unable to react. He could even hear discussions about whether to pull the plug. I thought, boy, this is a problem. <laughs> I said, I can't talk. I can't communicate with him. For a couple of weeks, Michael was trapped in his own body until his daughter, Cheyenne, a pre-med student at GCU, noticed him blinking. She says, I'm going to do the alphabet. And uh, when I do, you blink on the letter. He blinked the phrase, no hope. And immediately they all broke out in tears and started around, oh, there's hope, there's hope. And I thought, all right, now I've broken through. Michael spent the next few months using his mind to retrain his body. He imagined typing with his paralyzed fingers. Now is time for all good men to come to the aid of their country, performing the mental exercise over and over for days until finally his fingers cooperated. We were just overjoyed. Couldn't believe that it was actually happening. Nearly six months after the stroke, he went home and decided to take control of his rehab, building himself a wheelchair ramp, then a balance board. He installed these bars to help him relearn to balance. Every uh, morning I walk 100 yards. Michael has always been a problem solver. What needs to be fixed, he will rebuild. First with the mind, then body, then soul. It's not what knocks you down, it's how you get up is the story. So locked-in syndrome is believed to be caused by bleeding in the brain stem. According to Medicine Net website, the number of people affected by locked-in syndrome is really unknown because it's so rare and may go unrecognized. The majority of patients recovering from the syndrome never regain full functionality. And the fact that Michael can walk and talk is needless to say, remarkable. Talk about someone though who is making the most of uh, his a terrible situation. Chair? Right. He, I mean, how he's does he go he is, from... He is resourceful. That's incredible. Yeah, it really is. I uh, mean, it's, it is truly nothing short of a miracle. And I think, I think his, his, his family agrees, and they are so grateful to have him back uh, and have all the functions that he has. Amazing. So, yeah, great oh, story. Great, great story.